to worship. Behold, the dwelling of God is with us. God will dwell with us, and we shall be God's people. God will wipe away every tear from our eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. Behold, I make all things new. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end.
let us say together what we believe using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. Third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The epistle reading is 1 John, chapter 3, beginning with the first verse. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. It does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Now please stand for the reading of the Gospel. The Gospel reading is Matthew chapter 5, beginning with the first verse. Seeing the crowds, he went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when, you when men revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For so men persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the word of God for the people of God. I love Jesus because he said some very strange and hopeful things. For instance, Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers. But in the world, we say, blessed are the war makers, or blessed are the war victors. Jesus said, blessed are the pure in heart. But the world says, blessed are those who have guile and cunning and know how to get ahead. Jesus said, blessed are the poor. Today, I went to a uh, Duke fundraiser at the convention center last night. This was not an event that you would entitle Blessed are the Poor. <laughs> it was a Blessed are the Rich, right? If you were rich in this world, you will be fawned over. But Jesus said, Blessed are the poor. Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are those who mourn. Through history and through our lives, we, take out our mind, we try to get our minds around what is unimaginable, and words always fail us, and our human ability is never enough. On February the 14th of 1884, Theodore Roosevelt had his mother, Mitty, and his wife, Alice, die within hours of one another. That night, he wrote in his journal simply this, the light has gone out of my life forever. Santiana was grieving the death of a close friend and wrote these words, With you a part of me hath passed away, and I am grown much older in a day. As far back as Homer in the Iliad, he tries to imagine Andromache's grief when she learns of the death of her husband, Hector. My heart is in my throat. My knees are like ice. 
With these words on her lips, she ran outdoors like a mad woman. Black night swept over her eyes. Lavanna Quinlan's novel, One True Thing, it tells the story about Ellen Golden, who took off work to come home to be with her mother as she was dying of cancer. After she died, someone asked her, did you love your mother? The easy answer is yes. But it's too easy just to say that when you're talking about your mother. It's so much more than love. It's everything, isn't it? When someone asks you where you are from, the answer is your mother. When your mother's gone, you've lost your past. I did love my mother, but I didn't know how much until she was gone. Wendell Berry wrote a great novel called Jaber Crow. He imagines people live in a little small town called Port William. Jaber has a friend named Forrest who's killed in World War II over in Europe. Here's what he thinks. I wondered where he was buried and if anybody even knew where. I imagine that soldiers who were killed in the war just disappear from the places where they are killed. Their deaths may be remembered by the comrades who saw them die, if the comrades live to remember. Their deaths will not be remembered where they happened. They will not be remembered in the halls of government. Where do dead soldiers die who were killed in battle? They die at home, in Port William, and thousands of other little darkened places. And thousands of houses like Miss Gladys where the news comes and everything on the tables and shelves is all of a sudden a relic and a reminder forever. Jesus said, blessed are those who mourn. I'm trying to think where the blessing is that God gives us in this. The first significant death in my lifetime, I've narrated to a few of you before, was when my grandfather, Papa Howell, died. We got in a call down in Columbia, South Carolina. My parents got me and my sister Jan out of bed. They bundled us into the car. We had to go to Oakborough now. We had to drive now. So we drove through the dark, and just as the sun was coming up, we pulled there in front of Mom and Papa Howell's house. My father got out of the car. No words were spoken, but he and his two brothers strong military men who worked with their hands. They fell on each other's shoulders and they wept out loud. And I saw then for the first time that life is precious and that love runs so deep. There's a blessing in that. When I was in seminary, I had a very, very close friend who died. Her name is Daniel. Uh, she had cystic fibrosis. She died at age 23. The last time I went to visit her in Duke Medical Center, I was sitting with her and I just lost it and was crying. And she comforted me by saying, James, it's okay. She said, I've lived a good life. I love Jesus. Jesus loves me. It's all right. I guess Daniel subscribed to the other thing Wendell Berry said, which is, if the world ended tomorrow, at least we will have had this day. When I was at Duke, I had a professor named Roland Murphy. He just meant everything to me. He was a teacher, and then he was my advisor, and then he was my sage, and he was my mentor. He was like a father to me. I never made an important decision without consulting with him. He made it to age 85, and I was traveling with my daughter Sarah when I got the news that he had died. And I was grieving, but yet we went to dinner and I spent two, two and a half hours regaling her with stories from his life and our relationship and all that he'd meant to me. I was blessed. Blessed are those who mourn. Something I get to do for a living that's a great privilege is I sometimes get to be with people in the hour of death. And many of you have done this with someone that you love. And if you're with someone as they're dying, what you see is some immense courage and some nobility and tender love. It's a blessing. We grieve, and as Christians, it's not that we grieve less because Jesus died and was raised from the dead. If anything, we grieve more deeply because we can. We can grieve deeply. We don't have to pretend that the death doesn't exist because the good news is that Jesus came down and he, he actually died. We're not freaked out by death. God himself entered into our mortal frame and went through an early death, a painful 
death. And he did that to redeem all of us and so that he would have the right to say, blessed are those who mourn. And he's given us a church so we can love each other and lift each other up. Sometimes after a death, people say to me, how do people make it if they don't have a church family? I don't know. I don't know. Here's another thing. I'm almost done. Dietrich Bonhoeffer wrote this. He wrote a letter to his parents. He was in a concentration camp. Uh, he'd been put there by the Nazis, and it was Christmas Eve of 1944, just a couple months before his own death. He wrote this letter to his parents that said, Nothing can make up for the absence of someone we love, and it would be wrong to try to find a substitute. We must simply hold on and see it through. This empty place that we have inside, it is a great consolation for this gap, as long as it remains unfilled, preserves the bonds between us. It's nonsense to say God will fill this gap. He doesn't fill it, but he keeps it empty and so helps us to keep alive our former communion with each other, even at the cost of pain. The dearer and richer our memories, the more difficult the separation. But gratitude changes the pangs of memory into tranquil joy. The beauties of the past are born not as a thorn in the flesh, but as a precious gift in themselves. Maybe you have an empty place. Blessed are those who mourn. There's one other silly thing. Sometimes I'm with people right after death, maybe in the hospital room or at the funeral home or wherever, and somebody will tell some dumb joke and everybody laughs, and they catch themselves like, ooh, we shouldn't be laughing. I remember when my friend Clay died. He was just 45 years old, left a seven-year-old daughter, Lauren, behind. We were grieving this deeply. I drove to Clay's house, and when I knocked on the door, his father came, and I embraced his father, and I, I didn't know what to say. I just said, he, he just didn't live long enough. And his father said, you got that right because he never forgave you for that time you were playing spades and you misplayed your card. <laughs> and everyone around laughed. And there's something about that when there's that kind of humor, partly, partly it's a coping mechanism, partly it's diverting our gaze from what is unseeable. And yet at the same time, it's a strange gift because tears reside at the very place where laughter comes from. It's why we say we laugh till he died. We laugh and we have... Tears. I think it's a great gift of God when we're able to laugh in the face of death because, you see, God doesn't destine us for eternal sorrow. God destines us for joy and laughter. God will turn our mourning into laughter. There will be no more tears in heaven. Blessed are those who have mourned. And there's that great reunion. And God draws us back together with those that we have loved and lost, and we sorrow no more, but we laugh with God in heaven. I thought about it this week. If Jesus hadn't done anything else for us but this, it would have been enough. But the fact is, Jesus has done so much more for us. For instance, he's given us this day. Thanks be to God. On this Sunday, we celebrate All Saints Day as we remember with thanksgiving the members of our church who have entered the church triumphant during the past year. In our prayers, we ask that God would grant them eternal rest and that we would be kept in communion with all the saints until we are reunited with them around the heavenly throne of God. We remember all who have lived and died in the faith, and especially those most dear to us who rest in God, whose names we speak now. Will you please stand for the naming of the saints? <clears throat> William Bunk George Anderson. Margaret T. Bivens. James Sterling Brickle. Randez Brown. 
Mary Margaret Davis Bryant. Jane Wrinkle Cariaga Cook. Iris Lynette Corzine. James Jim R. Cruz. David R. Cribs. Sue Sellers Douglas. Celeste Ficklin Doolin. Robert Randolph Dunn. Stuart W. Elliott. Mary Ellen Ferris. James Carlton Fleming. Louise Smith Freeman. Colin Pearson Gilbert. Martha Howard Harper. Sydney Alexander Head. Mark Edward Heaton. Margaret Davis Huey. Martha Chernault Howard. Margaret Sievers Hunter. Lois Josephine Joe Moss Jones. Raymond Allen Jones, Jr. Betty Silcox McAdams. Samuel Sylvanus McNinch, III. Martha Allman Morrison. Albert Rogers Munn, Jr. Elizabeth Wells Myers. William Buford O'Neill, Jr. James Eugene Pommier. Deanny S. Pound. Lydia Virginia Scott. Christine Thiessen Shields. Margaret Bobbitt Sills. Catherine Kathy Pritchard Smith. Alfred Al Clyde Starling. Robert Lee Thomason. Mitchell Bays Turner. William Bill Harrison Walker. Joseph Joe Gary Wallace. Jack Jacob Wolf. Erwin Clue Yarbrough Sr. We light a final candle for all those we loved who have now joined the church triumphant. Let us join in our prayer for all saints. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks for all your servants who, having finished their course, now rest from their labors. Give us grace to follow the example of their steadfastness 
and faithfulness to your honor and glory through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now as a grateful people, let us receive God's tithes and our offerings. <laughs> 